This will probably be the craziest trip of my whole entire life. I have a lot to explain, but we need to go to the airport, so let's go. LAX parking is an absolute nightmare, but we made it, baby. Let's go inside and figure out where we're supposed to go. Talk to me, sir. What do we have here? Chorizo, 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 chorizo potatoes down the hatch. This is gonna be the start to probably one of the craziest trips we've ever been on. And if you've been watching this channel for a while and you remember when we went to Japan last year, this is the same spot in the same location that I started the vlog, right in the same terminal. Qatar Tourism reached out a week ago and asked if me and Sabrina would wanna come out, experience Qatar and everything that it has to offer for the car culture and of course I couldn't say no I've never been to Qatar I've never been to the Middle East but going on right now in Doha there's an F1 race there's a Geneva Auto Show apparently there's a bunch of other cool experiences that we're gonna go and get to show you guys so we're about to hop on a flight from LAX to Doha Qatar this is the longest flight I've ever been on and Sabrina's never even left the country never left the country 15 hour flight we're gonna go to bed and wake up and still have hours to kill I don't know what to expect I'm a little bit nervous. All right, so I just got to the seat, and this isn't just any ordinary seat. This is called the Q Suite Experience. Oh, I'm experiencing over here. We can't do it yet, but this wall will go down, and this seat and Sabrina's seat turns into one big room and we're gonna be able to close the doors and we can lower this and make it a full bed. Can I offer you a wine list? Oh, yes, please. Hi, oh, good, how are you? Are you together? Yeah, yeah, we're together. Why so much of this thing? I know. Oh, thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Wow. I should have played a joke on her and said, I don't know this guy, can you not? Can you put my seat cover back up? <laughs> so if you've ever questioned to yourself, what does a business class flight get you across the world, these seats come in at $12,000 each way. So for me and Sabrina to both fly business there and back, that's 40 grand. It comes with this phone device that allows you to control your screen. This is how you control your entertainment. I can control the cameras. Watch, let's do the, the rear camera. Ooh. Your seat has all of your adjustments so you can hit the recline. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> oh, it's not stopping. I don't know how to make it stop. Oh, there it goes. It's now time for dinner. They just gave me a tablecloth. The quality of this food that I got on this plane was some of the best tasting, high quality meals I think I've ever had. Salmon as a little appetizer. Chicken, potatoes, asparagus, some carrots. Time for some dinner. This trip is full of first time experiences and it was time for my next one. Changing into pajamas on an airplane. You can't come into a plane like this and not check out the bathroom. You got mouthwash, we got some Toothbrush with toothpaste. What I'm most excited about, PJs. Damn, look at the fit. Now it's time for a little sleep. I got my blanket, I got my pillow, and we're gonna turn this thing into a bed now, apparently. This blanket is better than what I have at home. I'll see you guys when I wake up. Unreal. You Great food, it. amazing staff. Sabrina was living. Slept for like eight hours. Sabrina loved Watched it. Watched TV, reclined. That was the first time she's ever done like a big international flight yes, nor left the, the country. Time I've ever left the country. We have to go find our bags. We have to go through customs and I think someone is here to pick us up and drive us to the hotel. But I want to show you this. This reminds me of the first time I went to Japan where I don't really recognize anything and yeah, it's gorgeous here. The airport is. is and the bathrooms were so high tech. 
Next time you go pee, you have to show them. I don't know if I'll do that. Time to give you guys the room tour. We just got here. This place is beautiful. It's nighttime and it's like 95 degrees and super humid. It's crazy. Our room comes with two king beds. We'll take it. Thank you. We have a pretty good view here of, I don't know, the thing is, I don't know where we are. I don't know anything about anything here, but I'm so excited to learn about it and share it with everyone. Apparently the hotel is the partner hotel with F1. So they gave us some F1 racing balloons and all this little stuff and there's gifts this is crazy padded club passes to f1 yo what that's crazy we have our passes for me and sabrina we're gonna try to stay up as long as we can tonight and go to sleep at like maybe 1 a.m try to wake up in the morning it's gonna probably gonna be a tough sleep because we're gonna try to hop on the doha time zone it's gonna be a little tough i think my body clock was so backwards i struggled to sleep well but we woke up really early because i was so excited to explore what the Middle East had in store for us. Good morning, you guys. It is now the next morning. Sabrina and I just ate breakfast at a random little coffee spot somewhere in there. I wish I filmed it. I didn't. I've totally forgot. We are at a mall, I, I think. It is hotter than we thought it was going to be. It's literally like a hundred plus degrees here with crazy humidity. Sabrina needs to try to find some clothes that are going to be more complimentary to the weather. So we're going to try to get into this mall, but we can't figure out how to go inside. Sabrina, let's just follow these people. We asked a security guard on the other side of the mall. I got so much social anxiety that I just said, okay, thank you, after he told me where to go. And his accent was so thick, it was hard to understand what he said. And I just said, okay, not in my head. But the F1 race is today. We get picked up at 3.45. So we're just killing some time. Trying to explore Doha and all the amazing things it has to offer. Absolutely beautiful. Look at these buildings. I don't know what any of these buildings are, but they look great. It's so cool. Anywhere you go in the city, you just see these F1 posters everywhere. There's apparently a lot of new tourism that comes here for the race. And this is the first time that F1's ever been to Qatar. And last night was the sprint race. We missed that. Bummer. But tonight we're going to catch the main race. Just right place, right from? time. Australia. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. What's going on? So we were just walking here. What was your name? Jed. Jed. Yeah, yeah. Jed just walked over. He's like, yo, I've been following you, you forever. That's one? so sick. Yeah, yeah. I came yesterday for the F1. Oh. Oh. I leave tomorrow nice. for the US, man. Oh, so, where in yeah. the US you going? I'm going to uh, Kansas City. Okay. Film. So that guy's name was Jed. He watched the videos and he saw that we were in the mall on my Instagram and ran here. I was kind of asking him a few questions. I'm like, yo, what's the car scene like here? What, what's what's kind of the lowdown? And he said that the car scene can be kind of hit or miss here, but there are a few individuals with crazy collections. He did say that the laws on cars are very strict, but oftentimes, Particularly depending on who you are, you can get away with more rules and regulations than other people. He also said that right-hand drive is not legal here. So you will not find any JDM anything here. So we're getting some shopping. What's your name? Ison. You guys are from the Philippines? Yeah. When he got here, he's like, man, I really wish Calvin, Calvin yeah. was here. Yeah. Next time. How long have you probably, been watching the vlogs for? Probably more than three years. Damn, yeah. that's awesome, man. Well, nice every to meet day, you guys. Man, every <laughs> day. Yeah, every day. Just got back to the room, realized we weren't able to film at the mall locations. I'm gonna take a nap, I'm tired, and then we're gonna get picked up and go to F1. So we just made it to the track. This is insane. There's so much to explain on what's going on right now, but we have, this is like a solid gold pass. We got exclusive entry. We have access to this lounge, which is literally above the pit lane. Ass Martin's right here, Haas. McLaren, Ferrari, that's so rad. We got here a few hours early because we have access to a bunch of different sorts of things that are here. Hi, Jumby. <laughs> it's wild. It's so crazy. Just stopped by Hamilton and Russell. It's so cool just to see them service these cars. The only thing I can compare it to is like our race team at home for all the drifting we do and seeing these guys just take these cars apart and service them and the speed and the efficiency and all the tools that they have to operate and move things is wild. I still haven't heard any of the cars start but I'm like wildly excited to hear the car run for the first time because I've never heard an F1 car in person. So I wasn't able to film anything but I just got a private look into Alpine. One of you guys I watched the vlog actually works for the team and he called me over and he pulled me back we got a photo together and I of course I had to ask I was like can I film any of this inside the garage he's like no you can't film anything take any photos because all the arrow was off and I couldn't leak what the car looked like but I got a custom little look at all the bodywork and the turbo setup and just all the mechanics and they let me hold different pieces of the carbon fiber of the car and I just got to like see it all that was awesome I wish I could have filmed it one thing I did want to note that I thought was really cool is the body paneling off the car was 
literally like the same thing as the GT3 cars. Like, I, I don't know if it's the same thing, but the quality, the weave, the hardware that's all used, all the, the cutouts and all the recessed stuff for the hardware, all looks the same. It was really cool to feel it and hold it. And I don't know, that's a moment I'm for sure gonna remember forever. And I wish I could have shared it with you guys, but gotta respect all of the, the hidden technology they have in all these cars. Recently, Valvoline has become a sponsor of the Aston Martin race team. Apparently, a couple of you guys actually work for the team and they texted me through my contact at Valvoline. I'm like, yo, come by. So I'm gonna try and meet up with them. I think I'm in the right spot. We'll see if they come out of the pits or not. All right, so somehow getting a little bit of a tour here. There were certain things we couldn't film because certain <laughs> Seeing these cars up and close, it's wild. It's so cool to see how many people it takes to operate to keep this machine going. We were just talking about too, yeah. a few of the people who work on this thing, work for GT3 teams, we were talking that carbon works, Yeah, yeah. kind of the same. The basic process is like exactly the same as, well I mean you bought it from a race car, like it's yeah. a basic yeah, car it, yeah. so it, but it's like exactly the same, the materials, how it's produced, even like how you fit it to the car, that's like exactly how we're trying to get the body work on this to fit, like it's literally, it's word for word the same. Like, that's so rad. So when I sent all the Hunco stuff out, that went to you, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I've got my hat here. Oh, okay. hell yeah. When the, when the camera's gone, I'm allowed to put other oh, stuff on. Oh, that's right. Like, well, on, mate. I have you to thank because I don't think if you watch the vlogs, I wouldn't yeah. be let in here. So oh, shout out to you, man. That's so yeah, rad. Mate, I, I the whole vlog's getting the whole behind the scenes here. So they all owe it to you. Things are just absolutely wild in person. And to be up this close is just, oh man, it's crazy. I like, don't know what to do. I don't know if I should be filming and making a vlog. Or I don't know if I should be like taking photos for Instagram. All right, so we're about to do pit lane practice. And they're gonna be giving me a pass during the race to go sit with them. So we're gonna head back up now. I'm sweating, it's so brutal. Looks like some of the drivers are coming on track now. That was so sick. I think we've all seen F1 tire changes happen on TV, but seeing it in person is an absolutely wild experience at just the sheer speed at which they can do this. This is the first time in history F1 has ever taken place in Qatar. And this track actually got built for this event. It was really cool to see it build up for the first time with fans screaming with energy. It's an experience I will never, ever forget. Good morning. It is now the next day. Happy Sabrina third. and I fell asleep at midnight after getting home from F1. Guys, we literally woke up at 2 p.m. 2 p.m. This morning we are at the Geneva Auto Show in Qatar. I've never attended a Geneva before in my life. I'm very excited. It's essentially a car show that debuts all the new and up and coming cars that are gonna release for all the brands. But what makes Geneva interesting is that it's an international car show. There's tons of automotive brands I personally have never heard of and odds are you haven't. For example, has anyone ever heard of the Link & Co? I haven't. Have you ever heard of the De Delage? Delagi? Don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. But there was a couple cars that caught my interest that I wanted to show you guys that I'm assuming is a supercar. It's a two-seater and it looks like this. Have no idea what this is, but it's absolutely beautiful. Let me give you guys a closer look. Thing is street legal. It has plates on it, so it has to be street legal. I didn't really know what I was looking at, but the more you look at it, it's actually very cool. A lot of this suspension looks like what we saw yesterday at F1. Very, very similar, especially with the carbon fiber like upper and lower A arms. The passenger is pretty much screwed, but the front seat is super sick. Looks like it's on some sort of center lock. Wow. I want to ask someone how much this thing is. This thing is, I'm sure it's wildly expensive. And then when you don't want to run the convertible top or the clamshell, this is what it looks like with the roof on. Wow. As we were doing it, Sabrina said she looked it up and it's about two million euros. Two and a half million US, pretty expensive, but wow. Very cool car, let's go see what else we can find. Okay, here's a wild one, a company called Lazarus. It's a motorcycle that flies? 
allegedly. Not even sure how that's a thing, but apparently that's what it looks like with all of its wheels down. And this one looks like when it wants to fly. I really want to know if this is actually real. Of course, we had to stop by the Porsche spot. Never seen an ST in person. So wild. Interior looks so sick. And it's got the manual gearbox with the carbon buckets. This thing is rad. So cool. And look at the What's wheels. <laughs> That is so rad on the center locks. I've also never seen this in person. That's Very cool. Yeah. Sabrina's obsessed with this car. I'll be honest, I don't know really anything about it. I don't know, I still think an Urus looks better. Oh, it's like a coupe design. So it's a coupe design with foldable front seats with a, probably a back seat option, if this is what production is. I don't know. I don't love it. I said the same thing about the Urus, and then I ended up loving the Urus, so we'll see. For those that have been watching the channel for a little over a year, you'll remember that I used to have a 2017 4x4 Square. We had the Gen 1, this is now the Gen 2. These things with their markup are still close to like half a million. I think maybe now they're maybe into the mids or low 400s, but the MSRP on this I think is around high two, low three, but the markup's crazy. This is the last Gen, the Gen 2. It's very cool, I do want one, but there's no way I would ever spend that much on this car. Really cool to see this thing in person. It's actually a little bit shorter than the Gen 1. It's not as tall as the other one, which honestly is a good thing because when I had the Gen 1, it was so difficult to drive at places because everywhere I went, when I put like my roof rack on it, I was hitting all the low clearance signs. Like when I went through drive throughs and I obviously couldn't get any parking garages. So the fact that, that it is shorter, it's honestly probably a good thing. For those that have been watching long enough where you remember when I had my Aventador, this is the Aventador replacement. I'm not even gonna try to say the name because I honestly, I'm gonna butcher it and I don't really know what it's called. First impressions, I've never seen one in person. These have been out now for like six months on display before people have like ordered them. I think it looks cool, but I feel like the first time you see a lot of these production cars or you see something brand new, personally, I oftentimes don't love them the first time I see it. And oftentimes it takes me like, you know, seeing it 10, 15, 20 times before I get used to it and I start to appreciate certain aspects of it. Side profile is pretty cool. It almost has like an Uricon rear three quarter, but like the length of a Aventador and the rear tail lights look super cool you can't really see much of a view of it but would I rather have this for the crazy markup or an Aventador I would definitely rather have an Aventador over buying this with crazy markup at least for now so we ran into former car former car is pretty much like aftermarket aesthetics at a really high caliber this is pretty cool I've never seen one in person before they have this really cool display where the camera is showing the wheel and you can change the design of it and it looks pretty real like it actually gives you a pretty good representation of what it would look like after a quick shower at home. We have a very special plan for tonight. We are going to be eating dinner, a little 1v1 date, and I'm finally going to propose <laughs> on the top of a skyscraper here in Doha. Uh, we just got to the hotel. Don't know what to expect. We literally just got dropped off. Sabrina's getting ready for her big night. She has her hands clean, just got her nails done. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. It's coming, just relax everyone. All right, so we just got our last descent. 48 floors, and now we're taking a stairwell set all the way to the top. Oh my gosh, there's no more stairs. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh my gosh. Whoa. Oh my god. That's probably one of the coolest views I've ever seen in my whole entire life. Okay, well, I'll be honest, I didn't really film any of our dinner, but it was absolutely amazing. We've had like 40 million things. They gave us fish, like steak. different courses. It was like 10 at that right point. It was literally like 10. I ate like two bites of everything. There was so much stuff, but the view is absolutely, what is it's crazy. By far the coolest place we've ever had dinner. I don't think there'll ever be a moment in time where I'm like, damn, this beats, this beats, this beats guitar. <laughs> this beats guitar. I think this is, this is it. it is so romantic. It's really rad. So because of that, I'm sure most of you can understand. Didn't decide to vlog this whole entire thing. I just really wanted to spend time with Sabrina and it was amazing. I don't really have much words for it. TJ just is walking down the flights of stairs to go to the bathroom. He doesn't want to film any of this because he's enjoying just me and him having dinner. But now that I have the camera to myself, you guys, this is unbelievable. When I tell you that the city wraps around, like I can't even give you guys a perspective on how 
big this place is and how high up we are. These are skyscrapers. Like we had to go 50 floors up here and it's just massive and beautiful and all the lights. If you guys ever have the chance to come to Qatar, skyline dinner on a helipad. There's helicopters that land right here. You gotta do it. This is just absolutely amazing. I don't wanna leave. He's back. I was uh, just telling the vlog that now about, we can, about our almonds. Now we can sit here after our lovely meal, and there's a basket of fruit here, sir. Oh. Can I offer you a an apple? Maybe. Oh, a date he, for the first time in my life today. Can you believe it? Yeah. I've been eating dates at home for the last like six months since I found them, it and every like, time I'm like, TJ, you gotta try one of these. He's like, mm, no, thank you. Giant rat turd. It does look gross, but it's so delicious. I'm the pickiest eater ever. I'm like, I'm no, I'm never gonna eat that. I'm so picky, <laughs> but I had it. They're so yummy, and when you add peanut butter to it and chocolate. Mmm, so good. Amazing. Good morning again, everyone. It is now the next day, obviously, and we are going to do something that, to me, is probably one of the coolest things about this trip. We're going out to the middle of the desert, to the sand dunes, and I'm told that there's a couple of different activities we're gonna be able to do out there. I'm not sure what they are, but we're meeting with the group right now. There's an entrance over there, babe. So right now, when we're in this sun you're looking at, it's like 105 degrees. It is the hottest sun I think I've ever felt in my life. We're meeting with the group right now, and we're gonna get into a, like a, a bus I think and it's an hour drive out to the middle of the desert and like there's this beautiful resort out there I'm not gonna spoil it. But let's go. Do you boys see that? Do you know that McLaren has a cafe? No, I bet you didn't because if you read the sign it says world's first McLaren cafe review unofficial official bubble review Very good. This is the McLaren latte. It's like a slight cinnamon, slight vanilla latte. Very good. It's the closest thing I've had to like Americanized coffee since we've been here. Uh, I've actually been drinking a lot of Arabic coffee, I believe what it's called. Very good. I still miss the coffee at home. We've been driving for about an hour we're in the middle of the desert and we're getting to like thicker sand. So the big convoy we're in, everyone's a Land Cruisers, everyone's dropping PSI out of the tires because we're gonna go get in the sand. And probably about another like 20, 30 minutes, we should be arriving at the destination. So we just got to this resort. The thing I'm most interested about are these camels. I think they're doing camel rides. I've never even seen a camel before. Look at these things, they're so huge. Hello. Wow, look at that guy. I need me a ride on one of these bad boys. Damn, prop me up on that sure thing, give me a ride around town. I'm a, a, a dune cowboy. This place is rad. Kinda hard to show because they're playing music everywhere, but it's a legitimate like resort in the middle of the dunes. They have a bunch of activities that we can go and do. What they call sand bashing, which is essentially just like going in a land cruiser and going up and down the dunes. I was like, not interested in that, no thanks. Then they have the side-by-sides you can go out and drive, uh, which would be pretty cool. It's pretty much razors and can-ams, but I was like, honestly, I have one. We go to the desert at home and do all that. Definitely cool and interesting, but they also said there's a sand boarding option, which is essentially snowboarding in the sand. I've always seen videos of that. I've always wanted to do that. So I'm gonna opt for that. I just have to figure out where I sign up for that. And I'm gonna figure out a way to get us there. But Sabrina's not gonna come, so I don't know who's gonna film for us or whatever. I'm gonna do my best to capture. Maybe I can vlog and sandboard at the same time. Not quite sure. All right, I gave up on the uh, sandboarding because it doesn't start till later. So I found myself in one of the side-by-sides. We're gonna be trail riding on the dunes. Wish me luck. I'm actually a little bit concerned here because I don't have sunglasses and the sun is literally right in her face and it's gonna be super sandy. I don't know how hard it's gonna be able to see. This is my first time driving a Can-Am. We have a Polaris Pro XP at home. And I love that thing. Never driven the Can-Am and they're actually quite different. I don't think this is like the sporty version of a Can-Am, but we'll see how it is. Now to what I'm really excited about, my first ever camel ride. And probably your last ever camel No, ride? no, I'm, I'm gonna get a camel Nobody after this. Ride, no one wants to ride them, they have, I do. They have masks on their face because they'll spit in your face. <laughs> He's talking to you. <laughs> oh God. It's pretty tall, are you gonna be able to do that? <laughs> Whenever TJ makes that face, that means he's nervous. That face right there where he grabs his lip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you did it! Pretty high up. Pretty high 
<laughs> it's definitely a little terrifying. Really? I would not recommend it. You're a little scared right now? I feel like I'm gonna fall off. You're not gonna fall off. I'm high up here. Look how nice they are. You're not, you're literally two feet off the ground. I'm gripping for my life right now. <laughs> Look at you go. And I'm over here like, I'm not gonna go on one of those. There he goes, off into the sunset. Off into the sunset of Doha. That was a lot of fun. We're super tired. We didn't get much sleep last night because we're still not really adjusted to the time zone. I'm gonna end it here and I'll see you guys in the morning. That was a much needed night's rest. Back in the 110 degree weather, we're walking to a Joe and the Juice. For those who don't know what Joe and the Juice is, actually it's news to me. They have Joe and the Juices all around the world. They have a few in San Diego. They make these really good flatbed sandwiches that me and Sabrina love. And we haven't really had any food that's like home. And to be honest, kind of missed it a little bit. So we're gonna be walking over there for some lunch. Is your boys hungry? And we're getting picked up by today's special guests. Joe and the Juice, spicy tuna, no tomato, add avocado, go to one, thank me later. So a week before we came out to Qatar, I put on my Instagram, I said if anyone is living in Qatar and can kind of get me connected with the culture there, or pretty much just give me a tour of some cool stuff in Qatar to see that's related to the automotive scene. A lot of people reached out and there was a specific group of guys that reached out that I actually ended up meeting at the Geneva show a few days ago. And they came up, they introduced themselves, and it sounds like they have a pretty cool car collection. And they have a couple things that I thought would be really cool to show you guys. They're gonna be meeting me here today at Joe and the Juice and picking me up. I have no idea what today is gonna unfold. I have no idea where they're taking us. It sounds like kind of an adventure, but they're gonna be picking me and Sabrina up in the next couple minutes. We're just waiting for them, and we're gonna see where it goes. So I'll introduce you guys to all of them, but I'm very excited. This is, uh, this is, this is gonna be cool, because I have no idea what we're getting ourselves into today. Okay, before we go anywhere, I'm stopping at a quick place that's down the street. It's called Topaz. Topaz. It's a detailing shop, but they also do PPF and they do vinyl work and stuff, but they have a crazy amount of Porsche cars that are here. They're all clients' cars that I just wanted to give just to show you because I've been here for the past five minutes. I've just been drooling over all the cars here. Lizard Green RS, GT3992. This is a really amazing spec uh, touring. That is just, this is so beautiful. Probably the my favorite touring I've ever seen. It's spec so well and this, whoever the owner is on this really knows this stuff because man, that is the hottest one I've ever seen. Uh, 992 RS, which I've only seen one or two of these in person. This is absolutely gorgeous. So cool to see it. One thing I just learned that I'm not sure if any of you guys know, outside of the United States, you can actually order roll cages from factory. So this has a carbon fiber OEM Porsche roll cage that is an option when you spec these cars, which I personally never knew that was a thing. I don't know if I'm the only one that's out there that's like that, but never knew that. GT4 RS, oh, the wing's the best thing. The wing is and if you get the YSEC package, the wing has DRS, oh, so cool. when you break, it tilts, creating more drag, and when you floor it, it will go like this, horizontal, so you have more passers, so you can actually reach a faster top I speed. Like the GT4 RS with like the mag blue wheels, oh my god. I, this car is actually said to be a better driving experience than the 992 have you RS. Driven that one? I've never driven it. I've heard it like sounds better, it drives better, it's nearly faster. I don't know too much about it, but it just doesn't have the visual look that the GT3 this has. This one looks more mean. This one just looks, I'm just in love with that, but you can't not love that. That is absolutely insane. And something that the GT4s have is they have the induction. So from the inside of the cabin, you literally can like hear the engine induction noise like right behind you. Super sick. 992 GT3 in yellow. Beautiful. We're moving on. I just had to show you this crazy Porsche collection. This car is actually going to be revealing later at a Porsche launch event later today. So we're getting, getting it to see before everyone else does here. But this is the new Turbo GT. It's the first one in like I think the Middle East region. It's very cool. Very pretty. It's actually the fastest SUV Nürburgring time if I'm not mistaken. Beats out the Urus. This new user interface. I'm not sure if the ones in the state have this yet. We have Turbo GTs in the States, but this one's newer. I don't know all the details about it, forgive me, but this is also a full digital display that's for the passenger. This right here is a 2023 Nissan Patrol, and it's a very popular car here in the Middle East, as are Land Cruisers and utility vehicles. Something that I think is absolutely wild and so interesting is, if you look at this car, 
Look at the styling, look at the door handles, look at the mirror styling, look at the over fender styling. Just look at everything. It literally looks like a late 90s, early 2000s styling. This is actually a 2023, and they're actually very sought after here. I'm told that there was a rumor late last year that they were gonna stop production on the Patrol, which has been in production for almost 25 years. And when that happened, everyone in the Middle East started buying these up, and these actually go for way over sticker. And it's just a, it's just, I mean, it's, I'm, it's a very cool car, but it's a very, uh, it's just a utility vehicle, it's not a sports vehicle. And I find it's so fascinating that that's a 2023 and it literally looks like it's from the late 90s early 2000s they haven't changed much of the styling it's obviously updated in certain areas like for example you open the interior look at this door handle that is not from 2023 from nissan you open it up it's very very uh you know it's not too spruced up but the just the cloth seats look like they're from the late 2000s the interior has some updated features but look at this. This is the shift knob, like the baseball stitching that you would literally get on like a Skyline in the 90s from Nissan. And they're still producing it today in 2023. I don't know if I'm the only one who thinks that's kind of crazy, but there's just so many things in America that we get used to that on the other side of the world, it's different. And that's, that's what I've loved so much about this trip is seeing the cultural differences, not only on a day-to-day -day basis, but on an automotive basis. Like learning that land cruisers and patrols are like the hottest cars. Like when you turn 18, you don't want a 240SX. You, what you really want is something like that Land Cruiser. I was told that's a very basic model of that Land Cruiser, but that's like what everyone wants. And that thing actually has a crazy, M like, they go for way over what the MSRP is. Absolutely wild. All right, so in my hand, I'm holding the key to a GT2 RS. A GT2 RS, for those who do not know, is essentially the 991 GT3 RS, but it uses the Turbo S engine. So it's the, pretty much, imagine it being the turbo version of the GT3 RS. Oh, you're fine, I'm sorry. It's wildly fast. It's nicknamed the Widowmaker. It's one of the fastest OEM straight line cars that literally were ever produced. I've never had the opportunity to drive one. And today, all of that changes. Sabrina, what do you think about me going to drive Wait, the car nicknamed the Widowmaker? Oh, well, I'm not your wife, so I don't really okay. care. Okay, all right, well. <laughs> So all of these cars today and where we're going today are all owned by our friends of the FBQ Museum. Now they have asked me not to film them or showcase them and of course we're gonna honor and we're gonna respect that. All your stuff you guys are gonna be seeing today is all owned by them. So FBQ, thank you so much. If you're ever in the Doha area or the Qatar area, 100% check it out. We're gonna be going to a very special place today. We're gonna visit the museum. I honestly, I don't even know what we're gonna see. But they said, TJ, pick what car you wanna drive. Do you wanna drive the 2RS or do you wanna drive the A12? And as much as I love Ferrari, and as beautiful as that spec is, I've never had the opportunity to drive this. It needs to happen. So let's hop in the 2RS. Feels very familiar getting in this car and it smells like, the just, they all smell the same. That's my favorite thing about Porsches. <laughs> so, oh, there's an exhaust on this car. Okay, so we're gonna have quite the uh, turbo spool noise, which I'm very excited about. I didn't film too much on the way here just because we're in a different country and I'm being respectful of the car, but I will say the turbo sounds amazing. This thing has uh, no downpipes and there's so much more torque than the GT3. I mean, obviously, what I mean, it's, it's wildly different. But we're entering right now the farm and the farm is where the museum is and a few other things. Look at this place. It's beautiful. Also, just have to note the custom order spec, Lambo Killer. That is the Nurburgring time when this beat the Uricon, I believe, uh, on the Nurburgring. That is sick. I think I'm in probably one of the largest rooms I've ever been in my whole entire life, but uh, I'm currently at the museum. The museum, unfortunately, is getting a renovation right now. They opened the museum for the World Cup, the FIFA World Cup that was here last year, and then they're changing some things about it. It's a massive classic car collection. It goes all the way from there, it was all the way down. Unfortunately, a lot of the cars, like I said, are in storage for the renovation of the whole entire building. But I just have to give a little bit of a walkthrough because it's just, it's an amazing collection. I'm not the largest uh, classic car enthusiast. I don't know too much about them. I appreciate them and respect them because this is where, you know, everything started. This is, without these cars and the passion of these cars, we would never have the cars that we pretty much drive and, and share on the channel today. But I just thought I have to give you guys a walkthrough. I have to showcase how amazing this collection is because it's one of the largest that I've ever seen. It's beautiful. I really wish I could pull the bags off all these cars or we'll have to come back maybe the next time we 
go through Japan because Qatar is not too far off that, but they said 100%. We need to come back here and check everything out. Look, there's an original uh, Lamborghini SUV right there. For those who don't know, Lamborghini was originally a tractor company, and then they moved into more of trucks, and then they started making sport cars like late, late after. Okay, just came across this car. I thought it was really cool. I had to show you Evo 5 in red. That's the rarest color for the Evos. And it's also, wait for it. You probably already know if you know Evos. The right spec, super cool. This car has about 7,000 kilometers on it, which is like low 3,000s in US. I've never seen an Evo with this perfect of an interior. If you're an Evo person, you know like all these door cards, usually uh, the material just unglues itself after time and they fall off and they, they're they usually all destroyed. I've never seen one in this good a condition. These, oh my God, seats are brand new. It, it's incredible. The shift bushings feel like perfect. Like the bushings on the shifter are amazing. I've never seen one in this good of a condition. Really cool find. It hasn't been registered since 2006 and it's just been a part of the collection all this time. They send it to the Mitsubishi dealership every so years to get maintenance and then it comes back and it sits. Absolute time machine. So we just came from those doors over there. It's closed off to the public. It's not open right now, but the father, I'm with the family, the father who owns this whole place uh, has been collecting artifacts his whole entire life. And it's just like part of the same building. This is all his personal collection. And this is some of the artifacts he's collected. And this is uh, amazing stuff. This is some more collection. I think they told me this was a former F1 driver cars that he has here on display. And this is an original well that's been here since they started building and it still is functioning today. Uh, I'm going to drop it, then we can listen to the echo, okay? So we're going to see how 75 meters needs how long time to reach. Three, two, one. Wow, did you see? Wow. Wow. The owner of the facility liked the Leaning Tower of Pisa so much, he decided I'm gonna make the Leaning Mosque. So the mosque is leaning, <laughs> and so is the tower. Wow. I thought that was so cool. So within the property of the museum, they're, oh look at the goats! Dates are very, very popular here. So this is a date farm. I didn't know dates came from palm trees, but there's wild peacocks and there's animals. Look at all these guys. Have you ever seen those videos of those goats doing like 360s and stuff? Look at this. Look at this little duck farm. Dude, if you were a duck hunter, you'd be in heaven right now. Free pickings everywhere. That's cool. All right, so as I told you guys earlier, the Nissan Patrol is a very sought after car here. And the, it's like the Land Cruisers. They're, they're very fun to modify and just like take everywhere. So this is one they pulled out for us to check out. I believe it's the, the turbo motor that came with the car, but it's full bolt-on, has a big Garrett turbo. Right now on low boost, it makes about 500. They said it on a tire boost, makes closer to seven. It's running MoTeC. And I just saw the engine bay. It looks pretty rowdy. from a car like this. That is so cool. All right, uh, they're gonna give us a little rip, so we'll see how this thing feels. Oh, that sounds sick. Wow. Not the sound you expect when sitting in the passenger seat. That sounds good. <laughs> that is sick. What? <laughs> it just does first gear burnouts? expected that out of this one and they were telling me too this setup currently isn't lowered it doesn't have the wheel and tire package that would allow it to do donuts and such otherwise you'd flip in the way it's set up right now and this is stock internals and it's summer right now so the temperature is wildly radical and the tune on the car right now isn't optimized for temperature are, but they were saying like is it not running even that well and the fact that it makes 500 stock internal stock everything they're saying it's very common for people in Australia and over here to do these like a thousand horsepower lower it 
rear wheel and tire package and it becomes a completely different car. Very cool. I, I don't think we quite have stuff like this in America and if we do it's more of like our four door like WRX or STIs or Evos and such or like late model like four door R34s or R33s but that is that is really rad. I would not expect this car to make that much power and have that much fun in it. And if you want to drop each seat and now you have a seven-seater car. That's honestly a recipe for a bad outcome, having this much power with seven seats. You have all your friends yelling at you from behind the steering wheel. I think we've all been there at one point. Just got back to the hotel room. I had such a blast. The family I was hanging out with today, they want to obviously stay off the vlogs and I wasn't filming with any of them on camera, but I was hanging out with them for like five or six hours and every person was so amazing and so sweet and that place that we were at, they own the whole facility and it's like literally like, I don't know how many acres it is, but for lack of better words, it's like a thousand acres and there's like a museum, there's farms, there's horse stables, there's horse riding lessons. Each person of that family has like their own personal garages that like, I didn't even show you guys 95% of that place uh, just because they wanna keep things private and keep things off camera. But let me tell you, I got the Qatar experience to another level and me and Serena just had such an amazing time with them. They've, like I said, I think in the videos, they've been watching the channel for years. So my Qatar friends, shout out to you guys. But I, I left because our flight leaves in um, less than 12 hours now. And uh, I was like, I gotta come back early night. Uh, gotta get ready to fly back tomorrow. So we came here and uh, Sabrina's pretty tired. We're not gonna go out to dinner anymore. She's just gonna do room service. And I actually texted them because uh, one thing about the culture here, and for lack of better words, I'm gonna butcher this, but everyone in the US, you can understand this a little bit. They have homes, and then you also own something similar to a home. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce it because I'm gonna butcher it, but it's like a man cave where at all hours of the day, anyone in the community, anyone here can come and visit and hang out. And it's a, it's a place of hanging out because people here hang out so late at night because it's so hot. And I'm talking, saying like, they'll hang out till like three, four or 5 a.m. on a daily basis. And then, you know, go to sleep and go to work later the next day. They were showing me so much about the culture and I was just, just learning so much. And I was so cult and culture shock and it was so amazing. I'm telling you this because I just texted and I'm like, yo, I'm gonna come back and hang out with you guys. And uh, they're like, yeah, come back, come back. So Sabrina's gonna stay here. She's packing, she wants to go to bed. I'm gonna go back, they're coming to pick me up right now. I'm gonna go hang out for a couple hours because technically if I could stay up through the whole entire night and get on my flight, I'd be resetting myself on this schedule. I feel like if I don't go back out, I'm gonna think back on this memory um, and be like, damn, I wish I went. So we're gonna go back boys. And I'm gonna, I really want to explain this culture part. And they also said that McDonald's is insanely good here and it's not the junk crap that you get around the world. It's like everything here is like healthy. It isn't designed to kill you like uh, food in America is. So we're gonna hit up a McDonald's on the way back there and I'm gonna try it live and I'm gonna give you guys the report. Is Qatarian McDonald's really different? Find out next. All right, we just got McDonald's delivered here. We have some spicy uh, McChicken. We have, you say, you say the nuggets are like the, the biggest difference? The best. It is fire. It is good. Thank you. I feel like the fries are gonna be less salty than in America. Let's give a little taste test. The fries taste way different. No salt compared to the States, but much sweeter. It's a very sweet, like, not like a sweet potato, but like it's a much sweeter taste. I don't know. It is very different. And just like that, here we are back at the airport. Your boy has officially pulled an all-nighter. Again, I didn't film as much as I wanted to, but I just want to say a special shout out to all my Qatarian friends. They were literally people who watched the vlogs. Um, we became friends with handfuls of people. We were just respecting their privacy and all that they showed us, but I have such love and found respect for this country and the way that just society and the culture operates here. Every time I go to a new country, whether it's been New Zealand, Japan, now Qatar, that's all for the vlogs, I get to learn so much and I want to say, and I have to say that I'm for sure coming back here. I hope to come back in a few months and I know during this trip we just scraped the surface of what is the car culture here in the Middle East and there is a whole more intense world of underground racing and dune racing and 
patrols and land cruisers that I need to experience and we didn't get to experience in this trip. We just didn't have the time. But I, I actually love it here. It's amazing. It really has taken me by surprise. Cars on display. Yeah, it's the culture here. Whoa, we got a experiment. What kind of Porsche is that? That's an old one. Yep, okay, yep. The 70s. That, yep, that works. What? Now we have uh, an amazing flight home on Qatar Airways, which I'm very excited about. 16 hours. The way here was 15. Oh, on the way home, it is 16. But that's why I stayed up all night so I could sleep for the beginning. Oh, sit on cars and cabin crew instructions at all times. Please let us know if there's anything we can do to make your flight more comfortable. Thank you. This officially would be the longest flight I've ever done in my whole entire life. Just landed, slept about 10 hours of that 15 hour flight. That was pretty easy. Well, back in the shop and we're gonna be getting back to it. That Qatar trip was an amazing escape from reality. I'm back in America. The people and the culture are what make that place amazing. And I really do think I'm gonna be going back soon. And I'm gonna try to take all the boys from the shop. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out and keep moving forward.